Well, this is part two video of finding source resistance. And first we're going to try with a battery. Now, batteries are kind of hard to find the exact source resistance because when you put a load on them, the voltage will kind of droop. And when you take the load off, the voltage will slowly recover. So where do you actually take the measurement? I'm not positive. I probably have to go to a website like the Battery University. They might have more information like that. But anyhow, I have this 12 volt, 5 amp hour gel cell type battery. It is three years old. And I should mention that the age of the battery, the state of charge, temperature, things like that will influence the source resistance measurement. So it could vary quite a bit. Okay, I have the battery. It's charged up. It's, it hasn't been on a charger for two or three months. And it's just sitting around and it's still got a full charge. It's 12.76. You don't want to try this right after the charge because you'll have a higher voltage. It'll probably be around 13 volts or more. I think they call it like a surface charge or something like that. So you want it to um, you know, settle out to its normal charged voltage. Okay. For the load... I use a 4 ohm load and I probably should mention even the load will affect the the source resistance measurement you get but I'll use a 4 ohm load and we'll just go from there okay I'll put the 4 ohm load I'll just hand hold it right on red I know somebody's gonna yell at me in the comment section doesn't matter if they're resistors Okay. Really pulls it down. Seems to settle out at 11.89. Okay. Okay. Well, after a couple minutes, the battery hasn't completely gone back all the way up, but you know, it's slowly working its way up. So, I just took the unloaded voltage minus loaded and that's the voltage difference and the loaded divided by 4 ohms is that many amperes so I took that number divided by that and we come up with 0.293 ohms or 293 milliohms is the source resistance of that battery so I can probably go somewhere and look up and see the condition of this battery if, if that's still low enough to be considered good. Seems to be a good battery anyway. Okay, we'll try another thing. Now I'm going to measure the source resistance of the wiring in my house. And there I am, John Audio Tech with his meter. There's Snickers the cat, who's, of course, he's sleeping. And there's Chippy the Chip Amp outside there. He wouldn't fit in the house with me. Always has a big happy smile on his face unless I short circuit his output. He doesn't like that much. And here's the actual Snickers, of course, sleeping. But, <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to measure at an outlet, actually a couple outlets, and we'll see how that varies. One outlet is back here in my uh, lab room, I guess you could say. And another outlet will be closer to my electrical panel. I want to see how the difference in distance affects the resistance of the wiring. Now, in theory, I'm measuring all the way back to wherever the power comes from. But, you know, the power grid has several suppliers of electricity, several users going off. 
But for all intents and purposes, you can think of the point from the transformer on back as so low it doesn't matter in resistance or impedance. You know, these transformers have very low impedance. What we're really measuring is the impedance of the wiring from the transformer down to the meter through the the uh, circuit breaker panel and through the house wiring. Now because the house wiring will have the thinnest gauge that's where most of that impedance or resistance is going to lie. Alright, so without further ado, I'll take some measurements. Okay, I have a electric heater. If I didn't say so before, you need something that draws fairly high current and has a unity power factor. So this heater should work quite nicely and have the kilowatt meter here. The nice thing with this, it measures the current directly so we don't have to calculate it. Now one important thing with this test is you have to watch your voltages because if a air conditioner, refrigerator, something happens that causes the voltage to change it will throw off your measurements and it's constantly changing because my transformer is shared with four other houses so it's gonna change a bit so first we need to get the unloaded voltage and I'll plug in the heater and get the loaded voltage. So just monitor how this changes when you start and when you finish. So it dropped down to 115.1, 11.4, .4. let's see here, 115.3, 11.34. Okay, I'll just say 123 volts minus 115.3, I think it was. So, difference of 7.7 .7 volts. And if we divide that by the current, uh, what was it, 11.34, I think it was. Point six. 79 ohms 679 milliohms so that's fairly high measured at my friend's house up in Michigan and he had 0.55 even though he was plugged into a power strip this outlet is the furthest away from my electrical box though I'm going to try electrical box that is closer to my breaker panel and see how that affects this. I came upstairs in my work area. This outlet wire literally goes over here back and then down into the garage where the breaker panel is. At 123.7 open load 119.7 loaded with the heater and 11.7 something amps so I'm getting 0 0.340 so that's about half much better and I would say it'd be nice if your resistance in the wiring is not any more than uh, about 0.5 ohms maybe even less 0.4 it's pretty good here I, I can even tell the heater runs a little faster than it did downstairs because the voltage didn't drop as much 
It was 119.7 verses. What was it? 115.3 down there. So we're losing quite a bit of power because of the longer wire run. But that's it. This one to play around with source resistances of various supplies, including the house wiring. Thanks for watching.